The National Socialist German Workers' Party German, Nationalsozialistische Deutsche Arbeiterpartei, abbreviated NSDAP, commonly referred to in English as the Nazi Party English, was a far-right political party in Germany that was active between 1920 and 1945, that created and supported the ideology of Nazism. Its precursor, the German Workers' Party Deutsche Arbeiterpartei, DAP, existed from 1919 to 1920. The Nazi Party emerged from the German nationalist, racist and populist Freikorps paramilitary culture, which fought against the communist uprisings in post-World War I Germany. The party was created as a means to draw workers away from communism and into Völkisch nationalism. Initially, Nazi political strategy focused on anti-big business, anti-bourgeois and anti-capitalist rhetoric, although such aspects were later downplayed in order to gain the support of industrial entities and in the 1930s the party's focus shifted to anti-Semitic and anti-Marxist themes, pseudo-scientific racism theories were central to Nazism. The Nazis propagated the idea of a people's community, Volksgemeinschaft. Their aim was to unite racially desirable. Germans as national comrades, while excluding those deemed either to be political dissidents, physically or intellectually inferior, or of a foreign race The Nazis sought to improve the stock of the Germanic people through racial purity and eugenics, broad social welfare programs and a collective subordination of individual rights, which could be sacrificed for the good of the state and the Aryan master race. To maintain the supposed purity and strength of the Aryan race, the Nazis sought to exterminate Jews, Romani and Poles along with the vast majority of other Slavs and the physically and mentally handicapped. They imposed exclusionary segregation on homosexuals, Africans, Jehovah's Witnesses and political opponents. The persecution reached its climax when the party-controlled German state organized the systematic genocidal killing of an estimated 5.5 to 6 million Jews and millions of other targeted victims, in what has become known as the Holocaust. The party's leader since 1921, Adolf Hitler, was appointed Chancellor of Germany by President Paul von Hindenburg on 30 January 1933. Hitler rapidly established a totalitarian regime known as the Third Reich. Following the defeat of the Third Reich at the conclusion of World War II in Europe, the party was declared to be illegal by the Allied powers, who carried out denazification in the years after the war. Etymology <inaudible> 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 The term Nazi derives from the name given in German to a party member National Socialist German pronunciation, Nazi, O na lazatsi, a elst, and was coined in response to the German term sozi, pronounced zo tsi, an abbreviation of Sozialdemokrat, member of the Social Democratic Party of Germany. Members of the party referred to themselves as Nationalsozialisten, National Socialists, rarely as Nazis. The term Partigenoss party member was commonly used among Nazis, with the feminine form Partigenossin used when it was appropriate. The term was in use before the rise of the party as a colloquial and derogatory word for a backward peasant, characterizing an awkward and clumsy person. It derived from Ignaz, being a shortened version of Ignatius, a common name in Bavaria, the area from which the Nazis emerged. Opponents seized on this and shortened the party's name in intentional association to the longtime existing Sozi to the dismissive Nazi. In 1933, when Adolf Hitler assumed power of the German government, usage of the designation Nazi diminished in Germany, although Austrian anti Nazis continued to use the term derogatorily. The use of Nazi Germany and Nazi regime was popularized by anti Nazis and German exiles abroad. Thereafter, the term spread into other languages and eventually was brought back to Germany after World War II. In English, the term is not considered a slang word, and has such derivatives as Nazism and denazification. History Origins and early existence, 1918–1923 The party grew out of smaller political groups with a nationalist orientation that formed in the last years of World War I. In 1918, a league called the Freier Arbeiterausschuss für einen guten Frieden (Free Workers Committee for a Good Peace) was created in Bremen, Germany. On the 7th of March 1918, Anton Drexler, an avid German nationalist, formed a branch of this league in Munich. 
Drexler was a local locksmith who had been a member of the militarist Fatherland Party during World War I and was bitterly opposed to the Armistice of November 1918 and the revolutionary upheavals that followed. Drexler followed the views of militant nationalists of the day, such as opposing the Treaty of Versailles, having anti-Semitic, anti-monarchist and anti-Marxist views, as well as believing in the superiority of Germans whom they claimed to be part of the Aryan master race. Herenvolk. However, he also accused international capitalism of being a Jewish-dominated movement and denounced capitalists for war profiteering in World War I. Drexler saw the political violence and instability in Germany as the result of the Weimar Republic being out of touch with the masses, especially the lower classes. Drexler emphasized the need for a synthesis of Völkisch nationalism with a form of economic socialism, in order to create a popular nationalist-oriented workers' movement that could challenge the rise of communism and internationalist politics. These were all well-known themes popular with various Weimar paramilitary groups such as the Freikorps. Drexler's movement received attention and support from some influential figures. Supporter Dietrich Eckert, a well-to-do journalist, brought military figure Felix Graf von Bothmer, a prominent supporter of the concept of national socialism, to address the movement. Later in 1918, Karl Harrer, a journalist and member of the Thule Society, convinced Drexler and several others to form the Politischer Arbeiterzirkel, political workers' circle. The members met periodically for discussions with themes of nationalism and racism directed against the Jews. In December 1918, Drexler decided that a new political party should be formed, based on the political principles that he endorsed, by combining his branch of the Workers' Committee for a Good Peace with the Political Workers' Circle. On 5 January 1919, Drexler created a new political party and proposed it should be named the German Socialist Workers' Party, but Harrer objected to the term socialist, so the term was removed and the party was named the German Workers' Party, Deutsche Arbeiterpartei, DAP. To ease concerns among potential middle class supporters, Drexler made clear that unlike Marxists the party supported the middle class and that its socialist policy was meant to give social welfare to German citizens deemed part of the Aryan race. They became one of many Völkisch movements that existed in Germany. Like other Völkisch groups, the DAP advocated the belief that through profit sharing instead of socialization Germany should become a unified people's community. Volksgemeinschaft rather than a society divided along class and party lines. This ideology was explicitly anti-Semitic. As early as 1920, the party was raising money by selling a tobacco called anti-Semit. From the outset, the DAP was opposed to non-nationalist political movements, especially on the left, including the Social Democratic Party of Germany SPD, and the Communist Party of Germany KPD. Members of the DAP saw themselves as fighting against Bolshevism, and anyone considered a part of or aiding so-called international Jewry. The DAP was also deeply opposed to the Versailles Treaty. The DAP did not attempt to make itself public and meetings were kept in relative secrecy, with public speakers discussing what they thought of Germany's present state of affairs, or writing to like-minded societies in northern Germany. The DAP was a comparatively small group with fewer than 60 members. Nevertheless, it attracted the attention of the German authorities, who were suspicious of any organization that appeared to have subversive tendencies. In July 1919, while stationed in Munich Army Gefreiter Adolf Hitler was appointed a Verbindungsmann intelligence agent of an Aklarenskommando reconnaissance unit of the Reichswehr Army by Captain Meyer the head of the Education and Propaganda Department, Department IB, P, in Bavaria. Hitler was assigned to influence other soldiers and to infiltrate the DAP. While attending a party meeting on 12 September 1919, Hitler became involved in a heated argument with a visitor, Professor Bowman, who questioned the soundness of Gottfried Feder's arguments against capitalism. Bowman proposed that Bavaria should break away from Prussia and found a new South German nation with Austria. In vehemently attacking the man's arguments, Hitler made an impression on the other party members with his oratorical skills. According to Hitler, the professor left the hall acknowledging unequivocal defeat. Drexler encouraged him to join the DAP. On the orders of his army superiors, Hitler applied to join the party and within a week was accepted as party member 555 the party began counting membership at 500 to give the impression they were a much larger party. 
Among the party's earlier members were Ernst Röhm of the Army's District Command 7, Dietrich Eckert, who has been called the spiritual father of National Socialism, then University of Munich student Rudolf Hess, Freikorps soldier Hans Frank, and Alfred Rosenberg, often credited as the philosopher of the movement. All were later prominent in the Nazi regime. Hitler later claimed to be the seventh party member he was in fact the seventh executive member of the party's central committee and he would later wear the Golden Party badge number one. Anton Drexler drafted a letter to Hitler in 1940, which was never sent, that contradicts Hitler's later claim, No one knows better than you yourself, my Führer, that you were never the seventh member of the party, but at best the seventh member of the committee. And a few years ago I had to complain to a party office that your first proper membership card of the DAP, bearing the signatures of Schussler and myself, was falsified, with the number 555 being erased and number 7 entered. Hitler's first DAP speech was held in the Hofbräukeller on 16 October 1919. He was the second speaker of the evening, and spoke to 111 people. Hitler later declared that this was when he realized he could really make a good speech. At first, Hitler spoke only to relatively small groups, but his considerable oratory and propaganda skills were appreciated by the party leadership. With the support of Anton Drexler, Hitler became chief of propaganda for the party in early 1920. Hitler began to make the party more public, and organized its biggest meeting yet of 2,000 people on 24 February 1920 in the Stottliches Hofbräuhaus in München. Such was the significance of this particular move in publicity that Karl Harrer resigned from the party in disagreement. It was in this speech that Hitler enunciated the 25 points of the German Workers' Party manifesto that had been drawn up by Drexler, Feder and himself. Through these points he gave the organization a much bolder stratagem with a clear foreign policy abrogation of the Treaty of Versailles, a greater Germany, eastern expansion and exclusion of Jews from citizenship and among his specific points were, confiscation of war profits, abolition of unearned incomes, the state to share profits of land and land for national needs to be taken away without compensation. In general, the manifesto was anti-Semitic, anti-capitalist, anti-democratic, anti-Marxist and anti-liberal. To increase its appeal to larger segments of the population, on the same day as Hitler's Hofbräuhaus speech on 24 February 1920, the DAP changed its name to the Nationalsozialistische Deutsche Arbeiterpartei National Socialist German Workers Party, or Nazi Party. The word, Socialist, was added by the party's executive committee, over Hitler's objections, in order to help appeal to left-wing workers. In 1920, the Nazi Party officially announced that only persons of pure Aryan descent could become party members and if the person had a spouse, the spouse also had to be a racially pure Aryan. Party members could not be related either directly or indirectly to a so-called non-Aryan. Even before it had become legally forbidden by the Nuremberg Laws in 1935, the Nazis banned sexual relations and marriages between party members and Jews. Party members found guilty of Rassenschind, racial defilement were persecuted heavily, some members were even sentenced to death. Hitler quickly became the party's most active orator, appearing in public as a speaker 31 times within the first year after his self-discovery. Crowds began to flock to hear his speeches. Hitler always spoke about the same subjects, the Treaty of Versailles and the Jewish question. This deliberate technique and effective publicizing of the party contributed significantly to his early success, about which a contemporary poster wrote. Since Herr Hitler is a brilliant speaker, we can hold out the prospect of an extremely exciting evening. Over the following months, the party continued to attract new members, while remaining too small to have any real significance in German politics. By the end of the year, party membership was recorded at 2,000, many of whom Hitler and Rome had brought into the party personally, or for whom Hitler's oratory had been their reason for joining. Hitler's talent as an orator and his ability to draw new members, combined with his characteristic ruthlessness, soon made him the dominant figure. However, while Hitler and Eckert were on a fundraising trip to Berlin in June 1921, a mutiny broke out within the party in Munich. Members of its executive committee wanted to merge with the rival German Socialist Party DSP. Upon returning to Munich on of July, Hitler angrily tendered his resignation. The committee members realized that his resignation would mean the end of the party. Hitler announced he would rejoin on condition that he would replace Drexler as party chairman, and that the party headquarters would remain in Munich. 
The committee agreed, and he rejoined the party on 26 July as member 3680. Hitler continued to face some opposition within the NSDAP, as his opponents had Hermann Esser expelled from the party and they printed 3,000 copies of a pamphlet attacking Hitler as a traitor to the party. In the following days, Hitler spoke to several packed houses and defended himself and Esser to thunderous applause. His strategy proved successful. At a special party congress on 29 July 1921, he replaced Drexler as party chairman by a vote of 533 to 1. The committee was dissolved, and Hitler was granted nearly absolute powers as the party's sole leader. He would hold the post for the remainder of his life. Hitler soon acquired the title Führer, leader, and after a series of sharp internal conflicts it was accepted that the party would be governed by the Führer Prinzip, leader principle. Under this principle, the party was a highly centralized entity that functioned strictly from the top down, with Hitler at the apex as the party's absolute leader. Hitler saw the party as a revolutionary organization, whose aim was the overthrow of the Weimar Republic, which he saw as controlled by the socialists, Jews and the November criminals, who had betrayed the German soldiers in 1918. The SA, storm troopers, also known as brownshirts, were founded as a party militia in 1921 and began violent attacks on other parties. For Hitler, the twin goals of the party were always German nationalist expansionism and antisemitism. These two goals were fused in his mind by his belief that Germany's external enemies, Britain, France and the Soviet Union, were controlled by the Jews and that Germany's future wars of national expansion would necessarily entail a war against the Jews. For Hitler and his principal lieutenants, national and racial issues were always dominant. This was symbolized by the adoption as the party emblem of the swastika or Hakenkreuz. In German nationalist circles, the swastika was considered a symbol of an Aryan race, and it symbolized the replacement of the Christian cross with allegiance to a national socialist state. The Nazi party grew significantly during 1921 and 1922, partly through Hitler's oratorical skills, partly through the SA's appeal to unemployed young men, and partly because there was a backlash against socialist and liberal politics in Bavaria as Germany's economic problems deepened and the weakness of the Weimar regime became apparent. The party recruited former World War I soldiers, to whom Hitler as a decorated frontline veteran could particularly appeal, as well as small businessmen and disaffected former members of rival parties. Nazi rallies were often held in beer halls, where downtrodden men could get free beer. The Hitler Youth was formed for the children of party members. The party also formed groups in other parts of Germany. Julius Streicher in Nuremberg was an early recruit and became editor of the racist magazine Der Sturmer. In December 1920, the Nazi party had acquired a newspaper, the Volkischer Beobachter, of which its leading ideologist Alfred Rosenberg became editor. Others to join the party around this time were Heinrich Himmler and World War I flying ace Hermann Göring. On 31 October 1922, a party with similar policies and objectives came into power in Italy, the National Fascist Party, under the leadership of the charismatic Benito Mussolini. The fascists, like the Nazis, promoted a national rebirth of their country, as they opposed communism and liberalism, appealed to the working class, opposed the Treaty of Versailles, and advocated the territorial expansion of their country. The Italian fascists used a straight-armed Roman salute and wore black-shirted uniforms. Hitler was inspired by Mussolini and the fascists, borrowing their use of the straight-armed salute as a Nazi salute. When the fascists came to power in 1922 in Italy through their coup attempt called the March on Rome, Hitler began planning his own coup. In January 1923, France occupied the Ruhr industrial region as a result of Germany's failure to meet its reparations payments. This led to economic chaos, the resignation of Wilhelm Kuno's government and an attempt by the German Communist Party KPD to stage a revolution. The reaction to these events was an upsurge of nationalist sentiment. Nazi party membership grew sharply to about 20,000. By November, Hitler had decided that the time was right for an attempt to seize power in Munich, in the hope that the Reichswehr the post-war German military would mutiny against the Berlin government and join his revolt. In this, he was influenced by former General Erich Ludendorff, who had become a supporter—though not a member—of the Nazis. On the night of 8 November, the Nazis used a patriotic rally in a Munich beer hall to launch an attempted putsch. Coup d'état. 
This so-called Beer Hall Putsch attempt failed almost at once when the local Reichswehr commanders refused to support it. On the morning of 9 November, the Nazis staged a march of about 2,000 supporters through Munich in an attempt to rally support. Troops opened fire and 16 Nazis were killed. Hitler, Ludendorff and a number of others were arrested and were tried for treason in March 1924. Hitler and his associates were given very lenient prison sentences. While Hitler was in prison, he wrote his semi-autobiographical political manifesto Mein Kampf, My Struggle. The Nazi party was banned on 9 November 1923, however, with the support of the nationalist Völkisch Social Bloc, Völkisch Sozialer Bloc it continued to operate under the name German Party Deutsche Parte or DP from 1924 to 1925. The Nazis failed to remain unified in the DP, as in the North, the right-wing Völkisch nationalist supporters of the Nazis moved to the new German Völkisch Freedom Party, leaving the North's left-wing Nazi members, such as Joseph Goebbels retaining support for the party. <laughs> Rise to power, 1925–1933 Adolf Hitler was released from prison on 20 December 1924. On 16 February 1925, Hitler convinced the Bavarian authorities to lift the ban on the NSDAP and the party was formally refounded on 26 February 1925, with Hitler as its undisputed leader. The new Nazi party was no longer a paramilitary organization and disavowed any intention of taking power by force. In any case, the economic and political situation had stabilized and the extremist upsurge of 1923 had faded, so there was no prospect of further revolutionary adventures. The Nazi Party of 1925 was divided into the Leadership Corps, Corps der Politischen Leiter, appointed by Hitler and the general membership Parteimitglieder. The party and the SA were kept separate and the legal aspect of the party's work was emphasized. In a sign of this, the party began to admit women. The SA and the SS members the latter founded in 1925 as Hitler's bodyguard, and known originally as the Schutzkommando had to all be regular party members. In the 1920s, the Nazi party expanded beyond its Bavarian base. Catholic Bavaria maintained its right-wing nostalgia for a Catholic monarch, and Westphalia, along with working class, Red Berlin, were always the Nazis' weakest areas electorally, even during the Third Reich itself. The areas of strongest Nazi support were in rural Protestant areas such as Schleswig-Holstein, Mecklenburg, Pomerania and East Prussia. Depressed working class areas such as Thuringia also produced a strong Nazi vote, while the workers of the Ruhr and Hamburg largely remained loyal to the Social Democrats, the Communist Party of Germany or the Catholic Center Party. Nuremberg remained a Nazi party stronghold, and the first Nuremberg rally was held there in 1927. These rallies soon became massive displays of Nazi paramilitary power and attracted many recruits. The Nazis' strongest appeal was to the lower middle classes, farmers, public servants, teachers and small businessmen, who had suffered most from the inflation of the 1920s, so who feared Bolshevism more than anything else. The small business class was receptive to Hitler's antisemitism, since it blamed Jewish big business for its economic problems. University students, disappointed at being too young to have served in the War of 1914-1918 and attracted by the Nazis' radical rhetoric, also became a strong Nazi constituency. By 1929, the party had 130,000 members, the party's nominal deputy leader was Rudolf Hess, but he had no real power in the party. By the early 1930s, the senior leaders of the party after Hitler were Heinrich Himmler, Joseph Goebbels and Hermann Göring. Beneath the leadership core were the party's regional leaders, the Gauleiters, each of whom commanded the party in his Gau region. Goebbels began his ascent through the party hierarchy as Gauleiter of Berlin-Brandenburg in 1926. Stryker was Gauleiter of Franconia, where he published his anti-Semitic newspaper Der Stürmer. Beneath the Gauleiter were lower-level officials, the Kreisleiter, county leaders, Zellenleiter, cell leaders, and Blockleiter, block leaders. This was a strictly hierarchical structure in which orders flowed from the top and unquestioning loyalty was given to superiors. Only the SA retained some autonomy. Being composed largely of unemployed workers, many SA men took the Nazi socialist rhetoric seriously. At this time, the Hitler salute borrowed from the Italian fascists and the greeting, Heil Hitler, were adopted throughout the party. 
The Nazis contested elections to the National Parliament the Reichstag and to the state legislature the from 1924, although at first with little success. The National Socialist Freedom Movement polled 3% of the vote in the December 1924 Reichstag elections and this fell to 2.6% in 1928. State elections produced similar results. Despite these poor results and despite Germany's relative political stability and prosperity during the later 1920s, the Nazi party continued to grow. This was partly because Hitler, who had no administrative ability, left the party organization to the head of the secretariat, Philipp Buhler, the party treasurer Franz Xaver Schwartz and business manager Max Amann. The party had a capable propaganda head in Gregor Strasser, who was promoted to national organizational leader in January 1928. These men gave the party efficient recruitment and organizational structures. The party also owed its growth to the gradual fading away of competitor nationalist groups, such as the German National People's Party As Hitler became the recognized head of the German nationalists, other groups declined or were absorbed. Despite these strengths, the Nazi party might never have come to power had it not been for the Great Depression and its effects on Germany. By 1930, the German economy was beset with mass unemployment and widespread business failures. The Social Democrats and Communists were bitterly divided and unable to formulate an effective solution. This gave the Nazis their opportunity, and Hitler's message, blaming the crisis on the Jewish financiers and the Bolsheviks, resonated with wide sections of the electorate. At the September 1930 Reichstag elections, the Nazis won 18.3% of the votes and became the second largest party in the Reichstag after the Social Democrats. Hitler proved to be a highly effective campaigner, pioneering the use of radio and aircraft for this purpose. His dismissal of Strasser and his appointment of Goebbels as the party's propaganda chief were major factors. While Strasser had used his position to promote his own leftish version of National Socialism, Goebbels was totally loyal to Hitler and worked only to improve Hitler's image. The 1930 elections changed the German political landscape by weakening the traditional nationalist parties, the DNVP and the DVP, leaving the Nazis as the chief alternative to the discredited Social Democrats and the Zentrum, whose leader, Heinrich Brüning, headed a weak minority government. The inability of the democratic parties to form a united front, the self-imposed isolation of the communists and the continued decline of the economy, all played into Hitler's hands. He now came to be seen as de facto leader of the opposition and donations poured into the Nazi party's coffers. Some major business figures, such as Fritz Thyssen, were Nazi supporters and gave generously and some Wall Street figures were allegedly involved, but many other businessmen were suspicious of the extreme nationalist tendencies of the Nazis and preferred to support the traditional conservative parties instead. During 1931 and into 1932, Germany's political crisis deepened. Hitler ran for president against the incumbent Paul von Hindenburg in March 1932, polling 30.1% in the first round and 36.8% in the second against Hindenburg's 49% and 53%. By now the SA had 400,000 members and its running street battles with the SPD and communist paramilitaries who also fought each other reduced some German cities to combat zones. Paradoxically, although the Nazis were among the main instigators of this disorder, part of Hitler's appeal to a frightened and demoralized middle class was his promise to restore law and order. Overt antisemitism was played down in official Nazi rhetoric, but was never far from the surface. Germans voted for Hitler primarily because of his promises to revive the economy by unspecified means, to restore German greatness and overturn the Treaty of Versailles and to save Germany from communism. On 24 April 1932, the Free State of Prussia elections to the Landtag resulted in 36.3% of the votes and 162 seats for the NSDAP. On 20 July 1932, the Prussian government was ousted by a coup, the Prussenschlag. A few days later at the July 1932 Reichstag election the Nazis made another leap forward, pulling 37.4% and becoming the largest party in parliament by a wide margin. Furthermore, the Nazis and the Communists between them won 52% of the vote and a majority of seats. Since both parties opposed the established political system and neither would join or support any ministry, this made the formation of a majority government impossible. The result was weak ministries governing by decree. Under Comintern directives, the Communists maintained their policy of treating the Social Democrats as the main enemy, calling them 
social fascists, thereby splintering opposition to the Nazis. Later, both the Social Democrats and the Communists accused each other of having facilitated Hitler's rise to power by their unwillingness to compromise. Chancellor Franz von Papen called another Reichstag election in November, hoping to find a way out of this impasse. The electoral result was the same, with the Nazis and the Communists winning 50% of the vote between them and more than half the seats, rendering this Reichstag no more workable than its predecessor. However, support for the Nazis had fallen to 33.1%, suggesting that the Nazi surge had passed its peak, possibly because the worst of the Depression had passed, possibly because some middle-class voters had supported Hitler in July as a protest, but had now drawn back from the prospect of actually putting him into power. The Nazis interpreted the result as a warning that they must seize power before their moment passed. Had the other parties united, this could have been prevented, but their short-sightedness made a united front impossible. Papen, his successor Kurt von Schleicher and the nationalist press magnate Alfred Hugenberg spent December and January in political intrigues that eventually persuaded President Hindenburg that it was safe to appoint Hitler as Reich Chancellor, at the head of a cabinet including only a minority of Nazi ministers—which he did on 30 January 1933. Topic. Ascension and consolidation In Mein Kampf, Hitler directly attacked both left-wing and right-wing politics in Germany. However, a majority of scholars identify Nazism in practice as being a far-right form of politics. When asked in an interview in 1934 whether the Nazis were bourgeois right-wing, as alleged by their opponents, Hitler responded that Nazism was not exclusively for any class and indicated that it favored neither the left nor the right, but preserved «pure» elements from both «camps» by stating «from the camp of bourgeois tradition, it takes national resolve, and from the materialism of the Marxist dogma, living, creative socialism». The votes that the Nazis received in the 1932 elections established the Nazi Party as the largest parliamentary faction of the Weimar Republic government. Hitler was appointed as Chancellor of Germany on 30 January 1933. The Reichstag fire on 27 February 1933 gave Hitler a pretext for suppressing his political opponents. The following day he persuaded the Reich's president Paul von Hindenburg to issue the Reichstag Fire Decree, which suspended most civil liberties. The NSDAP won the parliamentary election on 5 March 1933 with 43.9% of votes, but failed to win an absolute majority. After the election, hundreds of thousands of new members joined the party for opportunistic reasons, most of them civil servants and white-collar workers. They were nicknamed the Casualties of March. German, Marsgefallenen, or March Violets, German, Marsvelchen, to protect the party from too many non-ideological turncoats who were viewed by the so-called old fighters, alt Kampfer with some mistrust, the party issued a freeze on admissions that remained in force from May 1933 to 1937. On the 23rd of March, the Parliament passed the Enabling Act of 1933, which gave the cabinet the right to enact laws without the consent of Parliament. In effect, this gave Hitler dictatorial powers. Now possessing virtually absolute power, the Nazis established totalitarian control as they abolished labor unions and other political parties and imprisoned their political opponents, first at wild lager, improvised camps, then in concentration camps. Nazi Germany had been established, yet the Reichswehr remained impartial. Nazi power over Germany remained virtual, not absolute. Topic. After taking power, intertwining of party and state During June and July 1933, all competing parties were either outlawed or dissolved themselves and subsequently the law against the founding of new parties of 14 July 1933 legally established the Nazi party's monopoly. On 1 December 1933, the law to secure the unity of party and state entered into force, which was the base for a progressive intertwining of party structures and state apparatus. By this law, the SA actually a party division was given quasi governmental authority and their leader was co opted as an ex officio cabinet member. By virtue of a 30 January 1934 law concerning the reorganization of the Reich, the Lander states lost their statehood and were demoted to administrative divisions of the Reich's government 
Effectively, they lost most of their power to the Gao that were originally just regional divisions of the party, but took over most competencies of the state administration in their respective sectors. During the Rome Purge of 30 June to 2 July 1934, also known as the Night of the Long Knives, Hitler disempowered the SA's leadership most of whom belonged to the Strasserist National Revolutionary faction within the NSDAP and ordered them killed. He accused them of having conspired to stage a coup d'état, but it is believed that this was only a pretense to justify the suppression of any intraparty opposition. The purge was executed by the SS, assisted by the Gestapo and Reichswehr units. Aside from Strasserist Nazis, they also murdered anti-Nazi conservative figures like former Chancellor Kurt von Schleicher. After this, the SA continued to exist but lost much of its importance, while the role of the SS grew significantly. Formerly only a sub-organization of the SA, it was created a separate organization of the NSDAP in July 1934. After the death of President Hindenburg on 2 August 1934, Hitler merged the offices of party leader, head of state and chief of government in one, taking the title of Führer und Reichskanzler. The Chancellery of the Führer, officially an organization of the Nazi Party, took over the functions of the Office of the President a government agency, blurring the distinction between structures of party and state even further. The SS increasingly exerted police functions, a development which was formally documented by the merger of the offices of Reichsführer SS and Chief of the German Police on 17 June 1936, as the position was held by Heinrich Himmler who derived his authority directly from Hitler. The Sicherheitsdienst SD, formerly the Security Service of the Reichsführer SS, that had been created in 1931 as an intraparty intelligence became the de facto intelligence agency of Nazi Germany. It was put under the Reich Main Security Office in 1939, which then coordinated SD, Gestapo and criminal police, therefore functioning as a hybrid organization of state and party structures. Topic. Defeat and abolition Officially, the Third Reich lasted only 12 years. The first instrument of surrender was signed by representatives of Nazi Germany at Reims, France on 7 May 1945. The war in Europe had come to an end. The defeat of Germany in World War II marked the end of the Nazi Germany era. The party was formally abolished on 10 October 1945 by the Allied Control Council and denazification began, along with trials of major war criminals before the International Military Tribunal in Nuremberg. Part of the Potsdam Agreement called for the destruction of the Nationalist Socialist Party alongside the requirement for the reconstruction of the German political life. In addition, the Control Council Law No. 2 providing for the termination and liquidation of the Nazi organization specified the abolition of 52 other Nazi-affiliated and supervised organizations and prohibited their activities. The denazification was carried out in Germany and continued until the onset of the Cold War. Between 1939 and 1945, the Nazi Party led regime, assisted by collaborationist governments and recruits from occupied countries, was responsible for the deaths of at least 11 million people, including 5. 5 to 6 million Jews representing two-thirds of the Jewish population of Europe, and between 200,000 and 1,500,000 Romani people. The estimated total number includes the killing of nearly 2 million non-Jewish Poles, over 3 million Soviet prisoners of war, communists, and other political opponents, homosexuals, the physically and mentally disabled. Topic. Political program The National Socialist Program was a formulation of the policies of the party. It contained 25 points and is therefore also known as the 25-point plan, or 25-point program. It was the official party program, with minor changes, from its proclamation as such by Hitler in 1920, when the party was still the German Workers' Party, until its dissolution. Topic. Party composition Topic. Command structure Topic. Top leadership At the top of the Nazi party was the party chairman, der Führer, who held absolute power and full command over the party. 
All other party offices were subordinate to his position and had to depend on his instructions. In 1934, Hitler founded a separate body for the chairman, Chancellery of the Führer, with its own sub-units. Below the Führer's Chancellery was first the Staff of the Deputy Führer, headed by Rudolf Hess from 21 April 1933 to 10 May 1941, and then the Party Chancellery, Parteikanzlei, headed by Martin Bormann. Topic. Reichsleiter Directly subjected to the Führer were the Reichsleiter, Reich leaders. The singular and plural forms are identical in German, whose number was gradually increased to 18. They held power and influence comparable to the Reich ministers in Hitler's cabinet. The 18 Reichsleiter formed the Reich leadership of the Nazi Party, Reichsleitung der NSDAP, which was established at the so called Brown House in Munich. Unlike a Gauleiter, a Reichsleiter did not have individual geographic areas under their command, but were responsible for specific spheres of interest. Topic. Nazi Party offices The Nazi Party had a number of party offices dealing with various political and other matters. These included Rassenpolitisches AMT der NSDAP RPA. NSDAP Office of Racial Policy Auenpolitische AMT der NSDAP APA. NSDAP Office of Foreign Affairs Kolonialpolitisches AMT der NSDAP KPA. NSDAP Office of Colonial Policy Wehrpolitisches AMT der NSDAP WPA. NSDAP Office of Military Policy AMT Rosenberg Aero. Rosenberg Office Topic. Paramilitary groups In addition to the Nazi Party proper, several paramilitary groups existed which supported Nazi aims. All members of these paramilitary organizations were required to become regular Nazi Party members first and could then enlist in the group of their choice. An exception was the Waffen-SS, considered the military arm of the SS and Nazi Party, which during the Second World War allowed members to enlist without joining the Nazi Party. Foreign volunteers of the Waffen-SS were also not required to be members of the Nazi Party, although many joined local nationalist groups from their own countries with the same aims. Police officers, including members of the Gestapo, frequently held SS rank for administrative reasons known as rank parity and were likewise not required to be members of the Nazi Party. A vast system of Nazi Party paramilitary ranks developed for each of the various paramilitary groups. This was part of the process of Gleichschaltung with the paramilitary and auxiliary groups swallowing existing associations and federations after the party was flooded by millions of membership applications. The major Nazi Party paramilitary groups were as follows. Schutzstaffel SS. Protection Squadron. Both Allgemeine SS and Waffen SS Sturmabteilung saw Storm Division National Socialistisches Fliegerkorps NSFK National Socialist Flyers Corps National Socialistisches Kraftfahrerkorps NSKK National Socialist Motor Corps The Hitler Youth was a paramilitary group divided into an adult leadership corps and a general membership open to boys aged 14 to 18 the League of German Girls was the equivalent group for girls. Topic. Affiliated organizations Certain nominally independent organizations had their own legal representation and own property, but were supported by the Nazi Party. Many of these associated organizations were labor unions of various professions. Some were older organizations that were Nazified according to the Gleichschaltung policy after the 1933 takeover. Reich League of German Officials Union of Civil Servants, predecessor to German Civil Service Federation German Labor Front DOF, National Socialist German Physicians League National Socialist League for the Maintenance of the Law NSRB, 1936-1945, earlier National Socialist German Lawyers League National Socialist War Victims Care NSKOV National Socialist Teachers League NSLB 
National Socialist People's Welfare NSV Reich Labor Service RAD German Faith Movement German Colonial League RKB German Red Cross Kiffhauser League Technical Emergency Relief Tino Reich's Union of Large Families Reichsluftschutzbund RLB Reichskolonialbund RKB Bund Deutscher Osten BDO German American Bundtha employees of large businesses with international operations such as Deutsche Bank, Dresdner Bank, and Commerzbank were mostly party members. All German businesses abroad were also required to have their own Nazi party Ausland organization Liaison Men, which enabled the party leadership updated and excellent intelligence on the actions of the global corporate elites. Regional administration For the purpose of centralization in the Gleichschaltung process a rigidly hierarchical structure was established in the Nazi party, which it later carried through in the whole of Germany in order to consolidate total power under the person of Hitler Führerstadt. It was regionally sub-divided into a number of Gau, singular, Gau headed by a Gauleiter, who received their orders directly from Hitler. The name originally a term for sub-regions of the Holy Roman Empire headed by a Gagraf for these new provincial structures was deliberately chosen because of its medieval connotations. The term is approximately equivalent to the English Shire. While the Nazis maintained the nominal existence of state and regional governments in Germany itself, this policy was not extended to territories acquired after 1937. Even in German-speaking areas such as Austria, state and regional governments were formally disbanded as opposed to just being disempowered. After the Anschluss a new type of administrative unit was introduced called a Reichsgau. In these territories the Gauleiters also held the position of Reichsstatthalter, thereby formally combining the spheres of both party and state offices. The establishment of this type of district was subsequently carried out for any further territorial annexations of Germany both before and during World War II. Even the former territories of Prussia were never formally reintegrated into what was then Germany's largest state after being retaken in the 1939 Polish campaign. The Gau and Reichsgau state or province were further sub-divided into Kreis counties headed by a Kreisleiter, which were in turn sub-divided into Zellen cells and Blocken blocks, headed by a Zellenleiter and Blockleiter respectively. A reorganization of the Gau was enacted on 1 October 1928. The given numbers were the official ordering numbers. The statistics are from 1941, for which the Gau organization of that moment in time forms the basis. Their size and populations are not exact, for instance, according to the official party statistics the Gau Kermark, Mark Brandenburg was the largest in the German Reich. By 1941, there were 42 territorial Gau for Germany, seven of them for Austria, the Sudetenland in Czechoslovakia, Danzig and the territory of the Saar Basin, along with the unincorporated regions under German control known as the Protectorate of Bohemia Moravia and the General Government, established after the joint invasion of Poland by Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union in 1939 at the onset of World War II. Getting the leadership of the individual Gau to cooperate with one another proved difficult at times since there was constant administrative and financial jockeying for control going on between them. The table below uses the organizational structure that existed before its dissolution in 1945. More information on the older Gau is in the second table. Topic: <laughs> Nazi Party Gau. Later Gau Flanders existed from the 15th of December 1944, Gauleiter in German exile, Jeff van de Weel. Wallonia existed from the 8th of December 1944, Gauleiter in German exile, Leon de Grel. Topic: Gau dissolved before 1945. Simple renamings of existing Gau without territorial changes is marked with the initials RN in the column later became. The numbering is not based on any official former ranking, but merely listed alphabetically. <laughs> <laughs> Associated organizations abroad Gau <laughs> <laughs> in Switzerland The irregular Swiss branch of the Nazi party also established a number of party Gau in that country, most of them named after their regional capitals. 
These included Gau Basel Solothurn, Gau Schaffhausen, Gau Luzern, Gau Bern, and Gau Zurich. The Gau Ostschweiz East Switzerland combined the territories of three cantons, St. Gallen, Thurgau and Appenzell. Membership General membership The general membership of the Nazi party mainly consisted of the urban and rural lower middle classes. 7% belonged to the upper class, another 7% were peasants, 35% were industrial workers and 51% were what can be described as middle class. In early 1933, just before Hitler's appointment to the chancellorship, the party showed an under-representation of workers, who made up 29.7% of the membership but 46.3% of German society. Conversely, white-collar employees 18.6% of members and 12% of Germans, the self-employed 19.8% of members and 9.6% of Germans and civil servants 15.2% of members and 4. 8% of the German population had joined in proportions greater than their share of the general population. These members were affiliated with local branches of the party, of which there were 1,378 throughout the country in 1928. In 1932, the number had risen to 11,845, reflecting the party's growth in this period. When it came to power in 1933, the Nazi party had over 2 million members. In 1939, the membership total rose to 5.3 million with 81% being male and 19% being female. It continued to attract many more and by 1945 the party reached its peak of 8 million with 63% being male and 37% being female about 10% of the German population of 80 million. <laughs> <laughs> Military membership Nazi members with military ambitions were encouraged to join the Waffen-SS, but a great number enlisted in the Wehrmacht and even more were drafted for service after World War II began. Early regulations required that all Wehrmacht members be non-political and any Nazi member joining in the 1930s was required to resign from the Nazi party. However, this regulation was soon waived and there is ample evidence that full Nazi party members served in the Wehrmacht in particular after the outbreak of World War II. The Wehrmacht reserves also saw a high number of senior Nazis enlisting, with Reinhard Heydrich and Fritz Tote joining the Luftwaffe, as well as Karl Hank who served in the army. <laughs> <laughs> student membership In 1926, the party formed a special division to engage the student population, known as the National Socialist German Students League NSDSTB. A group for university lecturers, the National Socialist German University Lecturers League NSDDB, also existed until July 1944. <laughs> <laughs> Women membership The National Socialist Women's League was the women's organization of the party and by 1938 it had approximately 2 million members. <laughs> Membership outside Germany Party members who lived outside Germany were pooled into the Auslands Organisation NSDAP, AU, Foreign Organisation. The organisation was limited only to so-called Imperial Germans and Ethnic Germans. Volksdeutsch, who did not hold German citizenship were not permitted to join. Under Benes Decree No. 16 1945 call, in case of citizens of Czechoslovakia membership of the Nazi party was punishable by between 5 and 20 years of imprisonment. <laughs> Deutsche Gemeinschaft Deutsche Gemeinschaft was a branch of the Nazi party founded in 1919, created for Germans with Volksdeutsch status. It is not to be confused with the post-war right-wing Deutsche Gemeinschaft, which was founded in 1949. Notable members included Oswald Mengen, Vienna, Herbert Chaya, province of Silesia inside Prussia, Hermann Neubacher, who was responsible for invading Yugoslavia, Rudolf Much, Vienna, Arthur Say Incourt, Vienna. Topic: Party symbols. 
Nazi flags – The Nazi party used a right-facing swastika as their symbol and the red and black colors were said to represent Blut und Boden blood and soil". Another definition of the flag describes the colors as representing the ideology of National Socialism, the swastika representing the Aryan race and the Aryan nationalist agenda of the movement, white representing Aryan racial purity, and red representing the socialist agenda of the movement. Black, white and red were in fact the colors of the old North German Confederation flag invented by Otto von Bismarck, based on the Prussian colors black and white and the red used by northern German states. In 1871, with the foundation of the German Reich the flag of the North German Confederation became the German Reichsflag. Reich flag. Black, white and red became the colors of the nationalists through the following history for example World War I and the Weimar Republic, the party flag design, with the centered swastika disc, served as the party flag from 1920. Between 1933 when the Nazi party came to power and 1935, it was used as the national flag, national flag and merchant flag, handles flag but interchangeably with the black-white-red horizontal tricolor. In 1935, the black-white-red horizontal tricolor was scrapped again and the flag with the off-center swastika and disc was instituted as the national flag, and remained as such until 1945. The flag with the centered disc continued to be used after 1935, but exclusively as the Parte flag, the flag of the party, German eagle. The Nazi party used the traditional German eagle, standing atop of a swastika inside a wreath of oak leaves. It is also known as the Iron Eagle. When the eagle is looking to its left shoulder, it symbolizes the Nazi party and was called the Parteiadler. In contrast, when the eagle is looking to its right shoulder, it symbolizes the country Reich and was therefore called the Reichsadler. After the Nazi party came to national power in Germany, they replaced the traditional version of the German eagle with the modified party symbol throughout the country and all its institutions. Topic: <laughs> Ranks and rank insignia. Topic: <laughs> Slogans and songs. Nazi slogans Sieg Heil Heil Hitler Nazi anthem Horst Wessel lied Topic Election results Topic German Reichstag Topic Presidential election Topic Volkstag of Danzig Topic See also Topic Notes Topic References Bauer, Yehuda, Rosette, Robert, nineteen ninety Appendix In Gutman, Israel Encyclopedia of the Holocaust New York Macmillan Library Reference PP seventeen ninety seven to eighteen oh two ISBN 0-02-896090-4. Evans, Richard J. 2003. The Coming of the Third Reich. New York, Toronto, Penguin. ISBN 978-0-14-303469-8. Evans, Richard J. 2005. The Third Reich in Power. New York, Penguin. ISBN 978-0-14-303790-3. Evans, Richard J. 2008. The Third Reich at War. New York, Penguin Group. ISBN 978-0-14-311671-4. Fischel, Jack R. 1998. The Holocaust. Westport, C.T., Greenwood Press. ISBN 0-313-29879-3. Goldhagen, Daniel 1996. Hitler's Willing Executioners, Ordinary Germans and the Holocaust. New York, Knopf. ISBN 978-0-679-44695-8. Hancock, Ian Romanes and the Holocaust, A Reevaluation and an Overview. In Stone, Dan. The Historiography of the Holocaust. New York, Basingstoke, Palgrave Macmillan. ISBN 978-0-333-99745-1. Hoon, Heinz 
The Order of the Death's Head, The Story of Hitler's SS, Der Orden unter dem Todinkopf, Die Geschichte der SS. London, Penguin. ISBN 978-0-14-139012-3. Kershaw, Ian Hitler, A Biography. New York, W. W. Norton & Company. ISBN 0-393-06757-2. Cole, Robert the SS, A History 1919-45. Stroud, Tempus. ISBN 978-0-75242-559-7. McNabb, Chris The Third Reich. Amber Books. ISBN 978-1-906626-51-8. McNabb, Chris Hitler's Masterplan, The Essential Facts and Figures for Hitler's Third Reich. Amber Books Limited. ISBN 978-1907446962. Mitchum, Samuel W. Why Hitler? The Genesis of the Nazi Reich. Westport, Connecticut, Prager. ISBN 978-0-275-95485-7. Newick, Donald L., Nicosia, Francis R. The Columbia Guide to the Holocaust. New York, Columbia University Press. ISBN 978-0-231-11200-0. Rummel, Rudolf Death by Government. New Brunswick, N.J., Transaction. ISBN 978-1-56000-145-4. Shirer, William L. The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich. London, Arrow Books. ISBN 978-0099421764-4. Snyder, Timothy Bloodlands, Europe between Hitler and Stalin. New York, Basic Books. ISBN 978-0-465-00239-9. Wheel, Adrian The SS, A New History. London, Little, Brown. ISBN 978-1-4087-0304-5. Zentner, Christian, Betterftig, Friedman 1997, 1991. The Encyclopedia of the Third Reich. New York, Da Capo Press. ISBN 978-0-3068079-3-0. Online Introduction to the Holocaust. United States Holocaust Memorial Museum. Retrieved 23 October 2017. Topic external links Text of Mein Kampf Program of the Nazi Party, its Manifesto in German Nationalsozialistische Deutsche Arbeiterpartei NSDAP 1920-1933 at Lebendiges Museum Online, in German Nationalsozialistische Deutsche Arbeiterpartei NSDAP 1933-1945 at Lebendiges Museum Online Organizations Bic NSDAP and Encyclopedic Reference Guide to the Nazi Party, Organizations, Uniforms, Flags etc. Published by the party itself.